How did we go from this to this in a span of 50 days? Well, Google, on staring into the abyss on the screen and forcing everything to sink in. But to make sense of all of this, let's go back to when it all began. So far, we've spent 9 months making games with Godot, and we went from 2D to 2D isometric, so it kinda makes sense if you know, just hop on the 3D game dev wagon. Cause I mean, how big of a jump would it be? So first day, first things first, let's try to list out things that we don't know and start from there. I made this list for myself, right? And I thought, oh wow, this list isn't really that long. <laughs> let's all learn how to make our first survival horror game as well. To hit two birds with one stone. Spoilers alert, it went disastrous. The list just got longer and longer as I learned more about both subjects, so these impulsive decisions eventually came back to bite my ass. Let's start with the first thing on the list. 3D modeling. We're gonna download Blender, 3D modeling software, and let's try to make our first humanoid. And after many, 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 many sad attempts, six to be exact, here's the result. Behold, Garbage. I'm not gonna lie, seeing hours of work turning into disappointments was kinda depressing, <laughs> so I eventually gave up. So let's ignore these failures for now and maybe, you know, try out 3D code stuff, maybe that's easier. Finally, after some fixes here and here, Beanie Bean Bean moves now. But this bean's built different. Unlike the average bean, it has a knife and a gun. Looks pretty aggressive, doesn't it? Well, not much. The weapons don't actually work, so it's it's pretty harmless. So we kind of have a problem here. Hmm. So I just learned that when making hit cast weapons in a 3D game, we don't actually spawn any bullets from the bullet hole. Like literally no bullets, <laughs> nada. So instead, are gonna use a ray cast to shoot other enemies, which is which is pretty cool. After I attached the ray cast to the guns, I used an hairy what? An area hitbox to slice enemies. After figuring some things out with the code, I went back to Blender and reattempted modeling. Based on my previous attempts, I just gave up on the thought of making characters and just modeled arms instead. <laughs> and it looks pretty swaggy. If we just ignore the fact that the character itself is just a damn bean, it looks like an achievement. Another important thing in my previous 30 day challenge where I made a 2D isometric game, I only made one weapon for the main character. But this time, in our 3D game, I modeled not four, not five, but three weapons. Yes, yes, things are going good. Until something impulsive erupted in my brain. What if? What if I'll also learn PS1 graphics too? I mean, how difficult could it be? And yeah, because it was actually pretty simple. So how does it work? Well, making PS1 graphics is like wrapping presents with a wrapper, but instead of a wrapper, you're using these pixelated textures instead that you can easily find online. And voila! Our knife now has this cool retro pixelated texture. Not bad for a first attempt. In terms of the wrapping, I'm not really sure if this is normal. <laughs> it looks very messy, I don't know. 3D modelers, please let me know. <laughs> Let's move on to the more exciting bits. So based on what I've read, survival horror games aren't truly survival horror if it's missing this one ingredient, resource management. So I created health boxes, ammo box boxes for the game, but made them pretty scarce because that's what Wikipedia told me. <laughs> anyway, if you ever run out of bullets, you have your trusty knife with you, so you know, don't worry that much. The ammo box also looks like cheese. But you know, I just can't be bothered anymore, I'm tired. And let's push this aside and let this revolution sink in. I'm actually kind of getting the hang of Blender. The basics doesn't really sound so alien to me anymore. And I'm actually using keybinds. <laughs> so maybe it's time to pull the rug and learn what I think is the trickiest part in this journey. 3D modeling and animation. Again. <laughs> Let's try to model our enemies, because why have a gun if you can't kill anything? Here are the sketches, and here are the results. This noob enemy is the first enemy. They chase you after and just try to slice you with a blade. At this point, things just started to click right, so I nailed it on my first attempt. The first enemy was pretty basic though, so I made another one named Rang. So I thought to myself, 
What else would be more terrifying than sharp blades? Other than bad breath. Arguably the most terrifying monster that you'll ever seen in your life. This tough gun shoves his foul breath because you, you, you deserve it. Also, I usually notice with horror games, there's always that one monster that's so freaking annoying to deal with, but you can't really kill it. So I made something similar in our game too. This tank boy has 300 HP. It just hoax smashes you and pisses you off. You can't really kill it. So there's that. Okay, but hold up Mizba. What? Don't all survival horror games have some sort of cool lore or something SMH? Oh yeah, I have to do that too. <laughs> well, if you're wondering why they're wrapped in bandages, it's because they were severely tortured when they were still alive. And these dead peeps are passengers of hell. And as, I guess as you go through hell, your skin and bones deform into this weird looking crap as a form of suffering, I guess. Does that make sense? No. Okay, let's proceed. The mechanics all look set. Things look good. And you might think that it's all smooth sailing from here. Well, no. It only gets worse. <laughs> this video was supposed to be another 30 day challenge. But as you've seen the thumbnail, I failed that. <laughs> I got to 50 days. It was because I underestimated the difficulty of level design and creation. Making 5 to 10 levels usually take an hour or so, but that's with 2D games. With 3D games, it's an entirely different story. One level took me one whole day. And it's probably because it was my first time making 3D levels, but still. <laughs> Aside from the mountains of disappointments, the levels are themed around death. The prison levels are kinda like the purgatory. I don't know, I've never been there. But as you go deeper and deeper, you'll eventually make it to hell. Yay! I sketched the levels, but when I played it, some levels didn't end up having that survival horror-ish vibe. But eh. Let's recall this acronym called FAST. First attempts are still trash. At least we're making progress. We're now just a few steps from the finish line. The suffering will soon end. So let's slap it with some final polishes to make the game somewhat bearable to play. <laughs> and you piece all those things together. And here's what 50 days of 3D game development progress looks like. My brother gave me 5 stars for making the glitchiest walking simulator ever. But you know, these aren't bugs, of course, you know, they're, they're features, what do you mean? The full, pre the full experience is now an itch. Check it out if you're interested. 